Tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. When I was a kid, one of the things that caught and kept my attention were dragonflies. In this episode, we'll learn about dragonflies and damselflies in Hawaii. We'll see some of the native species, as well as the introduced ones. With all the spectacular colors they come in, it's easy to see why artists from all over the world love to paint dragonflies. I'll show you how to draw the pinao, a native Hawaiian dragonfly that's one of the largest in the world. Then I'll share some tips on painting dragonflies as we join in on the dragonfly painting class in Waimanalo. Enjoy all this and more on a Wild Winged episode of Painting in Paradise! <laughs> when we return, we'll meet some of Hawaii's dragonflies and damselflies. Dragonflies have lived on Earth since the time of dinosaurs. They are insects with body parts that include a head, which consists of large eyes and a face, a thorax, an abdomen, six legs, and four wings. The most noticeable difference between dragonflies and damselflies is their size, with dragonflies being the larger. Dragonflies also have much larger eyes that wrap around their head while damselflies have a gap between their eyes. Dragonflies rest with their wings down like an airplane, and damselflies rest with their wings up and together behind their backs. Dragonflies and damselflies live near streams and marshes, like in this picture of Kauai Nui Marsh on the island of Oahu. They spend their young lives in the water as nymphs or naiads, eating small aquatic animals and mosquito larvae. When the nymph reaches maximum size, it'll climb out of the water onto a stick or plant and emerge from their exoskeleton, like a butterfly emerging from a cocoon. After stretching its wings and hardening its body, it'll take flight and search for airborne insects to eat, like mosquitoes and other insects. After mating, the dragonflies and damselflies lay eggs and reproduce as the cycle of life continues. The general Hawaiian name for dragonfly is Pinao. There are a number of native damselfly species in Hawaii too. The Hawaiian name for damselfly is Pina Pinao. Hawaii has two endemic dragonflies found nowhere else in the world. The Pinao Nui is the giant Hawaiian darner dragonfly. Its wingspan may be up to 6 inches wide, making it one of the largest dragonflies in the world. The other native is the Pinao Ula or Blackburn's Hawaiian dragonfly. This species is dark or black in color with pale yellow spots and striking red markings on it. Hawaii also has some indigenous dragonflies, meaning that they're native to Hawaii but also found in other parts of the world. One of those is the green darner. It's like a smaller version of the endemic Pinao Nui. Another indigenous dragonfly is the wandering glider. It's nice and gold in color, and it's the one I remember most when I was a kid. There are also several non-native dragonflies in Hawaii, including the brilliantly colored roseate skimmer, and the scarlet skimmer. Hawaii also has several native species of the smaller damselflies, some of which are endangered of becoming extinct. 
Some reasons for their decline are the loss of their habitat and predation from introduced animals such as fish and frogs. As you can see, dragonflies and damselflies come in an amazing array of beautiful shapes and colors, making them a favorite subject for artists to paint and make art with. Yeah, I discovered a rainbow while walking along by the sea. We walked all the way to the sunset, my beautiful rainbow and me. Beautiful rainbow, beautiful rainbow. Get your paper and pens and whatever you want to draw with ready, because when we return, I'll show you how to draw a dragonfly. So now I'm going to show you how I go about drawing a dragonfly. And I do it just like I do everything else. I start by pressing softly. How are we going to press? Softly. softly. That's right. Press softly so that we don't dig into the paper. And if we got to make adjustments, well, huh, they're going to be easy to do. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put an oval right here for the thorax area. Okay, And it's going to be kind of an oval, a little bigger on the top there. And the next thing I'm going to do is put a circle for the head. Your head goes right around there. Okay? And then the third part of the body is the abdomen. Yep. It's going to go like this. Come down, get kind of thin. And you'll notice I'm using a pen and kind of a thin pen at that. You can use a pencil or whatever you use to draw with. Okay? Now the next thing I'm going to put in are the wings and dragonflies have four wings. They got two front wings and two back wings, okay? Now what I'll do before I put in the wings is I'll put a little circle up here in the upper thorax and another circle down there in the lower thorax and that's where the wings are going to emerge from. Now I'll start the front wings right from here and then I'll go come back and end up right there on that top circle. Yeah? Other side. Come back. And end up there in that top circle. Now the bottom wings, they're actually a little bigger. I'm going to take them, come back down there. And when they come to the body, they get a little bit like that. Okay? A little bit of a curve in there. Okay, so come back, back to the body, and a little lower, and then a little curved, ending up at that lower circle in the thorax. Now, in the head are where the eyes and the face are, okay? The eyes are so big, we're going to make big circles like that, and those are those big eyes. They wrap around the head, they can like look back, front, any place. They're trying to get mosquitoes and bugs and things to eat. The front is kind of like a little triangle, too. That's... That's what they call the face. And sometimes inside there, you got little patterns and you might even see a little face. Now in the abdomen, they got about, I think they got about 10 sections, okay? So let's make some lines. Now while we're here, we can also start putting in the feet and some of those feet, because we're looking at them from the top, can be like coming out of the head area or Others can come out like from the thorax and dragonflies are insects so they do have six legs. We can put a couple of the legs like under the wing, okay? Yeah, and maybe those we don't have to make them so dark when we finish up. So right there we kind of formed up our dragonfly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in some foliage 
and I think you know this one's going to be like the Makaloa plant, and that's a native sedge. Choo, 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 choo. They got kind of like these seed parts here, and like blades, kind of like blades of grass. But you can go ahead and put in some sprigs. I think I call them. You know, little little shoots of a kind of a grass, like they call it a sedge. Makalo is a native one, and that's what I'm going to say I'm doing here. And these can have some kind of crisscrosses and stuff like that, okay? So you can kind of make up your Makaloa sedges. Every time you do a project, it's kind of neat. You get to like look up these things, um, study them, you know, and uh, make up your own from there. So now that I got my dragonfly formed up, I'm going to get a bigger pen so you can see a little better. And I'm going to go around the head, one eye at a time, and the face, oh yeah, and the thorax. Remember, it's a little bigger up front. I'm going to make the lines a little easier to see, and the ones behind the wings are going to get a little harder to see. Okay, the wings. Oh. Excuse me. So now's the part where I go over my thin line drawing with some thicker lines. things behind the wings I draw a little less visible. And drawing the Makaloa plant. Then those little patterns on the wings. Now I'm going to go in with a finer pen and just kind of enjoy playing inside all of these shapes and lines. Now I'll shade these eyeballs to give them some curve. Then do the markings on the abdomen. And more shading all around. Don't forget your signature. <laughs> the process you just saw of forming, outlining, and shading is the same process I use to create intricate drawings that take many hours to create. When we return, we'll join in on some dragonfly painting classes. Now relax and enjoy watching some of my friends paint their dragonflies. Seems like everyone comes around when there's some painting going down. Can you say hi to Celeste? Can you say Celeste? Hi. Celeste gets right to work on her background, putting in the water and lily pads and lotus plant. You can turn your canvas whenever you need to, to make the best use of the curve of your brush strokes. Now she's working on that beautiful lotus flower. This is a great chance to bring in some color.
starts the dragonfly's body with a base coat of paint. Then it's off to the second layer of paint, which will make the dragonfly's body seem even more robust. Painting the dragonfly's wings are really fun, because you're basically taking the colors that are beneath it and blurring them around a bit. It's nice to find ways to make the wings stand out from the background. You can even use colors that occur in other parts of your painting. Now she's having fun playing in the water. Is it all the way down? Yeah, there you go. And that is a wonderful painting of a Hawaiian pinau dragonfly on a lotus blossom. Thank you, Celeste. Good morning, artist. And now let's join in on a dragonfly painting class in Waimanalo. All right, so today we're going to be painting dragonflies. We've got a beautiful setting to do it in. Uh, not too much dragonflies around here. You know, they like water and um, rivers and streams. Anyway, dragonflies come in all kinds of colors, and we're going to be painting some natives, greens, blues, pinks, purples, uh, yellows, whatever you got. Well, in order to finish any painting, from, first you gotta start. On the east side of paradise, where blue meets blue, and the ocean and sky. These artists are starting with their background, so their dragonflies got a nice place to live. Where the mountains and the sea, they call out to me, come on over. sound of the waves come rolling in Waimanalo no other place first they'll put down be. one layer of paint and then start building upon that Waimanalo loved by all who come to see Kuvahipana the kupuna and the keiki come and lay a kayona. The see through wings are a place you can have a lot of fun in painting. As Honu swim on by <laughs> Visions of ancient days Take me back to another time Choosing where to put your highlights is sometimes a beautiful experiment At Pa Honu and Kaupo Ancestors came to know this place so far Guamanalo After all that foundation work, it's time to put the finishing touches on. Painting is a great way to learn about nature and gives us time to reflect on it. At the 
end of the day, we had a rainbow of beautiful dragonflies. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed this episode on dragonflies and damselflies. You can learn more about art and nature and download free color book art on my website at patrickching.com. Aloha. <laughs>